gun dogs. Uh, so getting a dog trained to a level that you can go out and duck hunt over them or goose hunt and be proud of that. Which is why we like the UK bloodlines because these dogs for the past 250 years have specifically been bred and developed just for that. I like to see a, a handler dog team. There's no better suited dog for that style than a Labrador. There's nothing finer than seeing a handler send a dog out, be able to stop them, handle them left, right, back, ask them to drop that nose and hunt. Labradors can do that. My dad was a bird hunter and we were white-tailed deer hunters. And uh, my dad had a love of bird dogs. They've been around since I was just tiny, tiny. I can remember stories that my dad have told me when we used to live in upstate New York for a couple years. He used to literally put me in a backpack. I wasn't old enough to walk. Put me in a backpack and we'd go out uh, on grouse hunting. So I've been around dogs my whole life and, and that's where it comes from. Bird dogs, uh, dad had English pointers, English setters, Irish setters, spaniels, we had the whole gamut. And uh, I loved every one of them, it was always there. Diesel, pull back. Oh, that's an action shot for you, wow. The retrievers came along later on in life. We weren't duck hunters growing up. Uh, when I was 18 years old, I got invited on my first duck hunt and uh, the guy had a chocolate Labrador and, and when that dog was out working that slough, picking those ducks for the first time, it was an instant love affair. Um, there was nothing like a, a Labrador. Ever since then, that's, that's been my dog of choice. I've gotten along with them well. They fit my style. They're my kind of dog, so that, that's where it comes from. It's really been there my whole life. Quite frankly, we're not trial guys. We're, we're not folks that um, uh, train our dogs to go trial. Not that they can't do it, uh, but that's just not what we do. We're, we're first and foremost duck hunters. So our training program is really built and developed and tailored around gun dogs. Uh, so getting a dog trained to a level that you can go out and duck hunt over them or goose hunt and be proud of that. Which is why we like the UK bloodlines because these dogs for the past 250 years have specifically been bred and developed just for that. Gun dogs, shooting dogs. What you can see just like with these two I've got right here, this is the demeanor that we're looking for. A dog, when it's time to go out and work, can go out and do the work efficiently, uh, quickly get the job done. But when it's time to settle down and wait for that next flock to come in, or you just want to be at home and just relax with your dog, that we've got this kind of behavior right here. And this is what we found in the UK bloodlines. Kill it, woman. Kill it. Kill it. Good boy. Good boy. 
We've had an issue with one of the dogs this morning. He's made a couple of mistakes. He's broke twice. And the reason for that is it's, it's mainly my fault because we didn't train enough for this. And, and that is hunting the dog out of a pit. This dog's an excellent marking dog. And, and what's happened is he's down in the pit and he can't see all the action going on. So as soon as the guns go off, he's wanting to get up to see birds falling. And what the result of that is he's breaking. So. We, we've had the advantage here, we've got several shooters, so I haven't shot several times so I can stop and focus on the dog. And this is important, if you've got a young dog, go with a buddy, and if your dog's having an issues, don't shoot, focus on your dogs and let your buddies do the shooting so that you can correct whatever issue is going on. So we've done that this morning, I haven't shot so I can focus on my dog. Now we're just gonna set up a quick training drill because the action's a little slow right now, uh, just to make sure that our corrections have, have made sense to him. So. We're just gonna set up a little retrieve here, actually do some shooting and uh, make sure our dogs are steady. If they are, then we'll send them out for a retrieve. That'll be the reward. We're gonna have one of our shooters put a couple rounds in the air. We've got three birds out. If everybody's nice and quiet and steady, then everybody gets a retrieve as a reward. Okay, Logan, <clears throat> shoot two times out there. Heel boys. Okay, Levi, go ahead and send Remy. The one on the left. Hold back. Quiz. Quiz. Heel. Hold back. Get on. Hold back. Diesel. 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 Dead. Dead. Good. All dogs were steady, so it looks like our, uh, our work that we did in the pit this morning, correcting the dog that was breaking, uh, made some sense, so we'll take that as a positive. Now we'll go back in and get back to our hunt. So when I was on that first duck hunt, when I was 18 years old, I knew that day on that boat ride coming out of there that I was gonna learn how to train a Labrador. And uh, it started right then. Um, I got home, I started getting my hands on every book I could. Um, there weren't a lot of TV shows out at that time or, or YouTube episodes or anything like that. It was, you had to read magazines and books. And I got my hands on absolutely everything I could uh, to try to get myself educated on what I was about to get myself into. And, um, you know, it was in the late 90s, early 2000s when I had stumbled across British Labradors and how these fantastic trainers over there in the UK were doing, were doing these style of dogs. And um, I knew it didn't take very long to figure out that that was the route I was going to go. I like to see a, a handler dog team. 
There's no better suited dog for that style than a Labrador. There's nothing finer than seeing a handler send a dog out, be able to stop them, handle them left, right, and back, ask them to drop that nose and hunt. Labradors can do that. And that just, uh, that fits me. I just, I love the whole teamwork aspect of it. They're great dogs to train off. Fantastic companion dogs. Just, in my opinion, it's the best all around dog you can have. And that just, that just fits what I like to do. My kennel's been around for, for quite a while probably 14 or 15 years but it was it was always a kind of a private kennel that I was running you know I would train some dogs for some close friends or if I'd been on a duck hunt with some guys and got along with them well and they they saw my dogs and what they were able to do I'd get some phone calls hey could you help me out or not I'd, I'd invite them out and do some coaching and through the course of that 14 15 years I just I learned that's an aspect of this that I really enjoy and that's working with other people um, you know, I've been blessed with some fantastic trainers both here in the U.S. and over in the U.K. that have shared their knowledge with me freely. I'm a big believer in pay it forward. If there's somebody that's wanting to learn how to do this and they're serious about it, I want to be able to help them, educate them, show them just like what was done for me. So from there, Brookstone really has taken the next step. Now we're, we're into formalized coaching, we're into the breeding program now, we're selling some uh, some very, very nice dogs. So that's that's kind of the backstory on that. It's just kind of blossomed into a very nice uh, opportunity for somebody to come in and get a very well-bred dog. And if we can help them out with their training, we're happy to do that. So if you'd like to learn more about Brookstone Kennels and, and what we do here, we've got a website and we would encourage you to go out and uh, check that out. You can get a lot of information on, on our dogs and what we do here and, and what we're able to offer. Uh, our website is bkgundogs.com and uh, go out there and check it out. And if you've got any questions or just want to talk gun dogs, retrievers, anything like that, feel free to contact us. But you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram. We're available out there and uh, we hope you go check us out. There's a soft spot right there, okay? okay? If you'll poke it right in there, and you always want that pointing up. Once you get in there, hold it like that, poke it in, work it up, down, and then around. This is a much more effective way to do this. Does that like break the spinal cord to it? it? Yeah, I, I, trust me, I, I don't know the physiology of it. All I know is it puts them up.